hope all of you can see my slides psychology of public speaking okay so guys uh, the word psychology is very important here and um, why psychology is important i'll explain you in detail today we are going to go in detail and understand how our mind works how thoughts work how we uh, analyze the information and how we uh, react okay everything i'm going to tell you so here we go and it is said that there are three types of fears first is death second is public speaking and third is death while public speaking so if you ask someone like you know uh, what is the greatest fear you have definitely uh, number one will be public speaking i mean everyone is scared of public speaking uh, how many of you are just raising hand up if you have gone through this you went on the stage and you were blank and black completely blank i mean you you didn't know what you were speaking and you were blank how many of you had this experience yes i also have this experience this is what uh, public speaking is all about but people think that those who are good public speakers they don't get nervous they are very calm and composed but that is not true actually i remember one quote by mark when he says that there are two type of speakers first nervous speakers second liars so everyone gets nervous and today i'm going to tell you how to handle this fear how to handle this nervousness and how to be a good communicator but before that let us discuss about why public speaking is important why we should be good public communicators today i train students from all over the world my online training sessions are there and every day i come across some someone who is 35 years old 40 years old 45 years old they are leaders actually in their own organizations and they come to me and ask me that you know i i am a leader now uh, i have experience of 15 years and 20 years and uh, till now it was fine i mean i was having just back end work but now i have to go and deliver my talks i have to deal with foreign clients i have to i have to address my team and we are 300 and 400 and 500 so what to do and then the problem starts and i'm so happy that i am addressing you at this young age i don't want you to join me at the age of 35 and 40 for working on for improving your communication skills for working on your public speaking skills so the problem with with our education system is this is communication skill is not given any importance I mean, even I was also the same when I was doing my engineering. We focus only on submissions and journals and you know orals and practicals, but we never give any attention towards communication skills, towards public speaking skills. And one more uh, aspect, one more personality is left untouched, and that is the psychology, the way we think, the emotions, the cognitions, the way uh, we handle information and handle our emotions. This is not given any importance. <laughs> but now once you cross 30 you realize that communication plays a very vital role yeah i mean in campus that is tested and gds are there interviews are there but that is just speaking communication is different communication is like not speaking see speaking is just uh, just you talk just you are good in english and you speak but communication needs polishing communication needs you have to work on that communication it's it's in this way like uh, uh, i can say like scribbling scribbling when properly trained becomes painting okay a running when properly trained becomes athleticism just shouting when properly trained becomes singing similarly speaking when properly trained becomes communication today communication has a public speaking has become such a vital skill if you are having only academic skills only technical skills you will just survive but if you want to be a leader if you want to have an impact if you want to grow in your organization if you want to influence hundreds and thousands of people lakhs of people public speaking is very vital today as you can see here if you want to be a good politician a good leader communication is the key public speaking is the key as you know these people harsha bogle and sidhu i i i just adore them the way they have developed you can see their career i mean harsha bogle he is mba from iim ahmedabad and he is such a great orator he is he is a good commentator why because of his communication skills he is a very good in communication skills sidhu i mean you know like he is a minister and he is so successful in on tv and uh, everywhere why the public speaking skills 
these people see there are many cricketers out there who have played cricket but they are not as successful as sidhu why this is this guy has one extra quality public speaking skills he is very good in communication you may have seen him in kapil sharma show and all this asha bogle well, he is from academics but hugely successful no uh, there are many people who have passed out from iim ahmedabad all are not as successful and famous as harsha bogli why see the public speaking skill he has the communication skill he has that has given him that success which he is having today so guys today public speaking is the key for growth and success in life and today i'm going to tell you about that but before moving ahead let me tell you how we think let me analyze our human psyche how we think and how we work you can see this triangle here see we are divided into three parts a human is is controlled by three aspects first is thoughts thoughts create feelings okay thoughts create feelings feelings create behaviors you can call this is a cognitive triangle cognitive means what the way we think and analyze the information let us take an example suppose a situation is there you see a small puppy a thought comes what a nice puppy okay the moment the thought comes feelings will come happiness will come now when you feel happy behavior will be according to the feelings you pet the puppy pet the dog now these thoughts what a nice dog is influenced by one more factor here which is not visible here and the factor is your beliefs your beliefs about dogs now those beliefs they are influenced by your past experiences about dogs and about puppies if your past experience and if you are brought up in that surrounding you love dogs you love puppies and you will definitely have good thought what a nice dog feeling will come oh i'm so happy i'm it's so cute you know then you will pet them. but if the belief about the dog about the puppy is oh they are disgusting they are dangerous they carry uh, some disease another thought will come the thought is so disgusting i hate it feeling will be negative feeling hatred will be there behavior will be as you know what will be the behavior you will avoid it so guys this is what we now another thing is here behavior these are you can see this 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 arrows they are pointing in both the directions why because feelings also create thoughts behavior also they are interacting behavior and feelings are interacting behavior also creates thoughts now this is a very important factor in depression also if you see people who are depressed if you see people who are anxious who get panic attacks who who are you know what we can call um, somewhat neurotic these people have problems in all these aspects now let me give you one example how behavior affects your thoughts okay here many people think that you know motivation motivation creates action motivation creates action motivation means what it's a thought it creates action it is true but opposite is also true thoughts also create sorry behavior or actions also create thoughts let me give you one example suppose you go to uh, go to gym okay while going to gym you don't feel like going to gym it's so boring and monotonous i don't want you go there you warm up you start taking actions then what happens the moment you start taking actions you start feeling good you start feeling i think all of you have this experience once you start feeling good one thought other again comes wow this is nice so behavior also creates feelings and also creates thoughts similarly for example one more example i can give you suppose uh, you help someone in need or for example you suppose help help someone cross the road once you do the behavior a good thought comes about yourself you feel good about yourself another thing is there we have feelings about our thoughts so here we have feelings about our thoughts suppose you are feeling nervous all of you listen huh suppose you are feeling nervous now we have metacognitions what are metacognitions you have feelings about your feelings you have feelings about your feelings when you feel nervous your neocortex part of the brain this is called as the thinking brain which i'll explain you that gives you a trigger that gives you a signal that hey you are nervous when you get nervous you get nervous about nervous i repeat again 
when you get nervous you feel nervous about your nervous nervousness now when you're feeling nervousness you think about your nervousness and another emotion will come that is nervousness so this is all intertwined interconnected guys now without understanding all these things you cannot go ahead you cannot be a good public speaker because when you are going to go on the stage thoughts will come feelings will be come feelings will be there and behavior will be there just telling you that go on the stage and speak up nothing will happen don't worry what is there to worry about that is superficial we have to go and understand the psychology how actually it works so when you if you want to be a good public speaker you have to focus on this point that is thoughts if you can handle these thoughts properly you will be able to handle your feelings also feelings of course which feelings come while public speaking you know that nervousness is there okay fear is there these feelings will come guilt will be there if you feel these feelings you should be able to handle if you can handle the feelings your behavior that is your performance in the in the in the particular talk will be better and that is what we are going to work on today guys now let us uh, see understand why we have emotions friends you know like uh the, the biggest problem we, we we have is we don't know emotions first we don't know what are emotions we don't know why they are here and we don't know what to do with these emotions which we every day uh, feel every day we go through most of the time we are unaware of the emotional roller coaster we are going through okay now before that because you know when you go on the stage emotions will be there when you want to be a public speaker emotions will be there and you know which are those emotions usually they are not very helpful emotions now the key for public speaking is your ability to handle your emotions you must be able to handle your emotions you must be able to deal with those emotions but before that you should know what are emotions and why these emotions are there in the first place in us for that you have to go back to the stone age and as you can see here in those days the most important priority for a human was survival only survival now during those days human was you know one of the weakest animal human did not have uh, fangs did not have claws did not have wings did not have good swimming skills no running skills no physical strength no teeth human was vulnerable and during that era lakhs of years before wild animals would they were there to kill that human and also human wanted to kill other animals also for his survival and now understand one thing when when this was the situation there was a problem and the problem was let us go here let us understand some uh, neuroanatomy of our brain let us keep it simple how it works so understand one thing as i as i said like millions of years ago we we were constantly under threat we there were there was a lot of stress on us and we were like had to take a quick decision that is called as fight flight or freeze flight fight or freeze means what suppose there is a movement in the bush now you have to quickly make a decision should i fight flight should i run or should i stay still and this decision that had been made quickly there was no time to think because if you take took 5 minutes and 10 minutes and 15 minutes you're gone the animal will kill you now what what we have to do is you have to understand why emotions came in us emotions are there for survival emotions came in us because nature wanted human to take quick actions without much thought process i'll explain you this let us come here this is a, a red part you can see almond ship amygdala amygdala part was the gift of nature to man so that he can survive why what what was the purpose let us come here now i see here suppose this is we see something we see something suppose we see a tiger a signal goes here thalamus okay this is inside the brain and then the signal goes to one more part this is called as neocortex okay here it comes this part then the signal comes here and one more is amygdala means what this part is called as the rational brain or the thinking brain or we can call it as the logical brain but this particular part which you can see like 
or red in color, this is called as the emotional brain. Now, emotional brain takes quick decisions. Why? Because we have to survive. We have to leave. Emotional brain does not think because during those days we had no time to think. Now see what happens is when a signal reaches here thalamus, one more signal bypasses this route and it directly comes here to amygdala. It's a bypass. Means what? As you can see the distance here, the distance between thalamus and amygdala is short. But the distance between the thalamus neocortex and this amygdala means what? See, understand. If your processing of the signal information goes to this part, we will analyze the information, we will think about it, and then we will also use our emotional part of the brain and combined, we'll combine this part and this part and take a better decision. But it was taking time. Because when a tiger is there in front of you, you have to take a quick decision. Therefore, this particular shortcut was developed by nature in our brain. Means what? When a signal goes here, quickly it reaches this part, your limbic system gets activated and it tells your body what to do, fight. If there was a fight, then our body gets ready for that. How? High blood pressure, high energy, adrenaline will come there and you're ready for fight. Flight, all the blood flow will go in your legs because you have to run away. Flight and freeze. Don't do anything. You can't do anything about the situation, freeze there. Now understand one thing, friends. These emotions which emerge from this part, okay, these are called as survival emotions. Okay, I will explain you. I will explain you. Now, what is amygdala hijack? Understand one thing. Let us take this public speaking situation. The moment you go on the stage, you get blank. What happens? You get blank means what? Actually, amygdala hijack happens. Your amygdala hijacks the thinking brain and your thinking shuts down. You forget what you have to say. All the study and whatever you have done, I think all of you have these experiences in school or college at least once. All this study, all the preparation which you did for 10, 15 days, one month, all is forgotten. And you prepare for one hour, but you end up speaking 10 minutes or five minutes. This is called as the amygdala hijack. Amygdala hijacks your rational brain and it shuts down and it takes emotional decisions. You get nervous, you panic and sweaty and all, all, all sweating starts. So this is what amygdala hijack is. Let us understand emotions, friends. There are two types of emotions, evolutionary emotions and emotions of civilization. Okay, evolutionary emotions, evolution, back, go back, lakhs of years before, evolutionary emotions and emotions of civilization. Today we are civilized. Today we do not have tigers. We do not have those situations. Today we have tigers, but as you know, like humans have mostly killed all the tigers now. We have just some tigers in Sundarban and all. <laughs> Actually, we are the threat for the tigers. tigers. Tigers are not safe. They should be nervous now. So the, the, those days are gone. Technology is there. We can protect ourselves. We are the safest now. Everything. You know, we have police to safeguard us. And usually, I think very rarely, very rarely, there is a threat for our life. Very rarely. Otherwise, most of the situations around us are not that severe, not that emergency. But what happened is, same amygdala is there in our brain. Is the, part, the role of amygdala is to think emotionally also and rationally also. This, these, this amygdala has these emotions. They're called as evolutionary emotions because understand emotions come to you to help you, to survive. They give a message to you. For example, the emotion is anger. Anger is giving a message to you that something is not correct. Fix that. That is anger. Guilt, self, we will not talk about depression, guilt, and anger right now. We are going to work on this emotion, anxiety. What is that is what you feel while when you go on the stage. And how how to handle this anxiety? We are going to work. And there are other emotions we can call the civilized emotions, which are really necessary now. We don't need to be depressed. We don't need to feel guilty. We need to be have milder emotion, milder form of emotion, regret. Anger is not required. Irritation is required. Anxiety is not required. Concern is required. 
these are the emotions which we need but we still have these emotions they are there and why these emotions come i'll tell you your amygdala gets cheated your amygdala when you go on the stage amygdala thinks oh this is life and death situation trigger it come on come on come on hey get up everyone get up everyone means what all the organs in the body amygdala tells hey get up everyone there is a fight flight or freeze situation this guy needs our help come on get up anxiety is triggered anxiety is triggered but the reality is we don't have tiger sitting in front of us they are just humans we are going there to explain ourselves amygdala is getting cheated so we have to tame the amygdala we have to handle the amygdala we want ec which we do not want evolutionary emotions we want emotions of civilization and how these emotions we can develop or how we can reduce the anxiety and we should have concern all of you understand we should have concern see don't get into words what i say is we need nervousness it's very important it is needed because when nervousness is there you will prepare you know when fear is there you you will not go anywhere and jump from anywhere fear is required for survival but we should have that in the right way in the appropriate quantity and that is what we are going to see hope all of you are feeling good and uh, enjoying all of you just raise your hands if you are feeling good one hand just raise one hand if you are feeling good yeah very nice thank you you are there okay let us move forward and now beliefs we do not choose our beliefs but our beliefs choose us what i want to say is this i can talk about beliefs hours and hours and hours which i will not do but i'll tell you one important thing beliefs are certain assumptions which we think they are true and we believe in our beliefs we think that what we believe is a fact but in the reality beliefs are not facts beliefs are just some mental events mental we can say chemical reactions which happen in our brain it has nothing to do with the reality guys what i want to say is this most of us have grown up just taking the beliefs acquiring the beliefs without actually testing the belief we do we do not validate whether the, whatever you believe is right or wrong and same thing holds true for public speaking also guys we have certain wrong beliefs irrational beliefs unrealistic beliefs about public speaking and now we are going to go, see as i said like as if you remember the triangle which i showed you hope you remember the triangle thoughts at the top thoughts were there thoughts are thoughts are the result of your beliefs and beliefs are not chosen carefully beliefs are not based on reality beliefs are therefore if beliefs are faulty thoughts will be faulty i mean thoughts will uh, will be irrational thoughts will not be based on reality you can think anything i always tell my students that don't trust all your thoughts don't trust all your thoughts because your thoughts are not realities every thought is not a fact it is just an it's it's like you know clouds are there in the sky clouds are like thoughts are like clouds do not take just look at the clouds and they will pass don't take every thought seriously or like true that is what we are going to work and now i'm going to tell you very important thing all of you this is a very important point distorted beliefs about public speaking we have to work on this distorted belief and now you will understand these are some new words for you i'll explain you what is these words are first is perfection perfection now what is perfection actually if you go and see perfection these people who seek perfection in psychological terms they are also called as ocd obsessive compulsive disorder these people seek perfection they want perfection in everything in fact they are so much obsessed with their perfection that they even if a pen is there they will keep it properly they will park their bike properly they will go and check the lock 10 times whether it is locked car they will they will lock the car unlock the car three four times again check it whether it is properly locked or not perfection is there now you will say that sir that it's good well understand one thing 
it is not good why it's not good because there is no perfection let us talk about public speaking let us apply this perfection attitude belief which is fit in our head when i go on the stage i must give a perfect talk that is the belief we have and if i don't give if i make a mistake while starting my talk if i fumble in between if i make some grammatical mistakes if i address someone in a wrong way if i forget oh my god it is so bad and then you come to point number 5 the point number 5 is you catastrophize you say oh my god it is so horrible it is terrible i made a mistake i'm lousy person i i'm worst speaker i don't deserve to be to be to be on the stage i will never hold the mic again perfection is a disease excellence is healthy listen carefully perfection is a disease yeah it's a disease actually it's a mental disease excellence is healthy now uh, let us take my talk maybe while speaking right now i may make some mistakes but i don't worry about that i'm not i'm not chasing perfection i'm chasing excellence what is excellence every day i try to make myself better i work on myself i i read a lot i listen to a lot of podcast and audio books i have my separate book for public speaking where i write all the things i'm working on myself but the moment you you know one more thing is that these people mostly have some disturbances their depression is one of the one of the problems you face due to perfection attitude second these people expect perfection from everyone around them now this does not mean that you should not do things properly you should do things properly give you 100% but when you go on the stage and you expect that you should speak each and every word properly the start must be good the introduction and the talk and the question answer session and in everything must be perfect that's not going to happen because this is unrealistic expectation there is no perfection at all we can't say that uh, taj mahal is perfect we can't taj mahal is very very nice but there may be a better version of taj mahal maybe someone will come and create better version than taj mahal taj mahal is one of the best but we can't say it's perfect there may be some other designs which we can do second mental filter again what is mental filter understand mental and filter you go on the stage maybe all of you have gone through this how many of you have given some presentations in your college and all just in your in your iit campus how many of you have given presentations at least once okay tell me now how how it works have you gone through this you give a presentation and there are i was also the same i would tell my friends that it was match fixing kind of thing i would do and i don't know about you i would do that i would tell my friends say hey, you should ask me only these two questions during why why you know during the presentation because teacher was there and i will also ask questions which which was the match was fixed and he used to ask me this question i used to answer and it was all match fixing that is fine during college days but now what happens is when you give a talk you are constantly looking at the audience and their facial expressions how they react do they laugh at my jokes or not <laughs> do they like my talk or not are they responding properly you are constantly checking that and you know what your energy your uh, enthusiasm it also depends upon audience also how they are responding to your talk and the your your talk finishes and then five people come and say four people say wow a very nice talk a well done and one says that you know um the talk was good but that point you said no that was not actually appropriate i feel like you should have done in that way finish this is finish what do you say i failed mental filter four people say good one person says bad you only focus on the one person even it may happen that 
out of six people, three people say good, three people say bad. You only focus on those three people. Even it may happen out of six, five people say you are bad. One person says good. You only focus on five. And you make yourself miserable. I repeat again. You make yourself miserable. You make yourself sad. You make not the audience. You in the sense your thoughts. Your thoughts, nothing else. And your thoughts are the results of these faulty beliefs. If out of six, three people say it was not good, but three have said it is good. It means, yeah, you are 50% good. And we don't know what these three people have said. Is it right or wrong? But this is the mental filter we do. Mind reading. Now what happens is when you go on the stage, there are some people who always are serious. They will not respond to your jokes. They will not respond at all. They are just staring at, the, at you like this. And you read the mind and you think that this guy is not interested in my talk, I think. I think I'm not doing good. You read his mind. But let me tell you one thing. We can't read mind. We, we are not telepaths. We can't read minds. We don't know. Actually, maybe that person is having a poker face. <laughs> we don't know about that. Maybe he's having this kind of attitude. He will just stare. He may be enjoying that, but he may be staring at you. We, we make this error. We, we make this error. And we conclude that this guy is not enjoying my talk. Mind reading, but the reality we don't know actually. Another emotional reasoning. Now, what happens in this kind of distorted thinking is, as I said, we think about our emotions. I hope you remember the triangle. We think about our emotions. As I said, if you get nervous, you have the ability. Only humans have the ability, okay? That is called as metacognitions. Only humans have the ability to think about their feelings. What happens is, I can give you an example. When you are boarding an airplane, you feel nervous. The emotion. And when these emotions come in you, you think about your nervousness. And you conclude that as I'm feeling nervous, therefore, traveling in a plane is dangerous. This is all the backhand work. That is what is happening in your mind. We don't know that this is happening. What is emotional reasoning? When you go on the stage, when you feel nervous, you take your nervousness very seriously. It means what? You think that this nervousness is there. Therefore, the situation in front of me is dangerous. Which emotion? Evolutionary emotion. Evolutionary emotion. We think about that emotion. And we believe our emotions. But as I said, amygdala is cheating you. We don't realize that. The emotion which has been triggered in your brain, that was for survival. But when you go on the stage, you don't die. Yeah, you will get nervous, but you don't die. You don't need that emotion of anxiety. You need emotion of concern. Another thing is catastrophizing. Suppose you went on the stage and you bombed. How many of you have gone through this? You went on the stage and it was a pathetic performance. How many of you have gone through this? Okay. I have gone through many times. <laughs> and that's the reason why today I can I can coach you for public speaking. I have gone through this many times. I, I will I will tell you at the end, I'll tell you about that. Catastrophization is another mental error, thinking error, which we do and we do this in this in everyday situations. But let us apply this in public speaking. The moment you do any mistake while public speaking, you catastrophize that event and make it larger than actually it is. You say to yourself that, oh my God, I made a mistake. Now my HOD will be angry on me. People will laugh at me. They will think I'm a stupid, I'm an idiot. My career is gone and I will die. Even when people lose a job, they catastrophize it. I lost my job. I will not get a job, my future is gone, and I will be destitute. You can think about, are you doing this catastrophization in everyday situations? Most of the people do. So guys, these are some of the distorted beliefs which we have to really work on. I will go forward and I'll explain you the next point. That is beliefs of a confident speaker.
okay what these people think and believe first thing is they believe that speakers are not born many people many students they say that you know sir uh, i think this is if your dad and mom is a very good public speaker you can no it's not like that it's a skill which can be developed anyone can be a good public speaker and the best example is me no one else i'm telling you guys i i will tell you at the end what kind of uh, person i was speakers are not born take winston churchill take dr martin luther king take barack obama take all the all the great public orators see their background go and study how they develop themselves they were so scared to go on the stage so scared but they work on themselves and they become a amazing public speakers when when they they, they would speak a crowd of thousands and lakhs would go silent pin drop silent that kind of influence they had but they worked on that second point mystics are good let me tell you one thing when you are speaking mystics are these are these are the beliefs of confident speakers they believe that mystics are good and i will learn from them every time i every time i go on the stage i may make a mistake and that's perfectly fine the greatest risk in life is not taking a risk i repeat again the greatest risk in life is not taking a risk if you are not making mistake you are not growing you are not getting better you should feel bad about your mistakes but not guilty about your mistakes if you feel bad you will work on the mistakes but if you feel guilty you will blame yourself and next time you will not go on the stage i tell you dear friends make mistakes on the stage said, but sir people will laugh at me it is their problem not yours you can't change people you can change your attitude not people's attitude and then if you want to be a good public speaker be a shameless person first you you cannot be a good public speaker with a lot of ego in you you have to keep your ego aside and be a shameless go on the stage and bomb there your friends will come and say hey who told you you are pathetic you are horrible you are nothing no don't do that it's not for you you are an introvert you don't have that good physical personality and that voice and that charm and the charisma they will tell you and that is what i always say like society will only society will only guess what you will be but it is you have to decide what you are actually going to be guys i really made some horrible mistakes in my speaking career embarrassing mistakes i was so embarrassed i i in fact i remember in one of my public talk i fell down on the stage can you imagine i slipped i tripped there but i could handle my emotions consistency is the key you cannot be a good public speaker by going once in a month on the stage sorry now let me tell you why i have why i have taken this assignment today actually for one one hour talk i i charge 20000 rupees but i know that you are um, um akshay i think he is in touch with me he said that sir we can't pay no problem i said i just want a platform to speak up i just want someone to listen to me if you pay it's bonus if you don't pay no problem i'm growing i'm improving in fact though you are not paying me i am growing i'm getting better and another experience see understand one thing these guys you people are going to ask me some tough questions at the end and let me tell you one thing i'm ready for that because tough students create great teachers okay this is the reason why i'm here i want to be consistent consistency is the magic take all the achievers in the world they are very consistent in their practice see you know virat kohli is virat kohli not because he hits a century once in a year he hits every season most of the time he is consistent 
and his consistency on the ground is the result of consistency in the net hello all of you getting it most of us what they do is we are just we, you are in the academics that's great friends but we are just only focusing on marks and all be consistent with public speaking in your campus wherever there is a, a in an event any public speaking event go and jump in be consistent in preparation how to prepare i'll tell you but be consistent in preparation also and in speaking also consistency is the key to overcome the fear this is called as in vivo desensitization technique in vivo desensitization means what exposure therapy the more you face the crowd the calmer the amygdala i repeat again the more you face the crowd the more you go on the stage your amygdala does not take public speaking as a threat life or that situation your amygdala thinks that oh okay this is happening regularly so this is not a life and death situation so amygdala tells your whole body that calm down guys calm down nothing to worry it's a public speaking talk this guy wants to do it so no need to panic your that nervousness will come down when you are consistent in giving talks next point nervousness and fear is the part of the game it do not many people come and say that sir i get nervous i say to them tell me why you should not get nervous tell me my question is why you should not get nervous it's a emotion emotions are there to give a message okay first accept those emotions yeah i am feeling nervous and you should be able another thing is you should understand your emotions when you go on the stage you should be able to read your emotions and emotions you can read through body sensations your body responds in a particular way to different emotions you are nervous your body will respond sweating may be there shivering heart palpitation may be there these things will happen you should be able to read them oh i am feeling nervous okay no problem my amygdala is naughty it is playing some tricks it's okay tell me delight it's okay you, you are making me nervous it's okay no problem once you accept the nervousness there will not be secondary trigger secondary means what as i said metacognition will not be there because now you have accepted your emotion yeah i'm nervous that's fine now what to do when you accept the nervousness you can slowly calm down how to calm down i'll tell you and you can focus on the audience but do not resist fear and nervousness they are part as i said practice is the only key you cannot be a public speaker by watching youtube videos hello or listening to my talk right now you are doing that right now you are very comfortable yes or no see look at you you are all calm relaxed composed who is nervous and the party is nervous now i know you will say that but sir we don't feel like you are nervous i i am nervous right now but my nervousness is controlled and how i have controlled already i have told you consistency wherever whenever i get a chance i give a public talk in my evening batch i have 100 students i have three batches and my students are from all over the world and they are not like you age they are 45 50 they are ceos and they are managers they are movers and shakers there some are as good as me in public speaking <laughs> they are as good as me but when i go there when i speak with them i never consider myself as i'm inferior to them because i know that your performance on the match depends on your performance in the nets and i that i do a lot i work a lot i practice a lot there is no way no other way only practice is the way start with your roommate start uh, with your clubs start in gd but just go there and see you will see a big change in your confidence now this is the point many people ask me sir you know how much time it will take to be a good speaker i'll say this is a wrong question because you can't say that you are a good speaker you are continuously evolving you are continuously improving so there is no time limit 
you cannot say, ah, here I am. I'm right. Now it's over. Then I'm perfect. Never. You have to keep on working on yourself. Every single day, you get better and better and better. There is no like a deadline for that. Nothing like this. So don't ask this question. How much time will it take? Guys, let us move forward. Now, uh, qualities of a good speaker. <clears throat> when you see a good speaker, what they have is they have high emotional quotient. Means what? A good speaker has the ability to connect his Wi-Fi with the Wi-Fi of audience. This is called as emotional Wi-Fi. Means what? His emotions and emotions of audience, they are in resonance. And they are connected through invisible Wi-Fi connection. Master speakers, master speakers, kindle the emotions in the audience. They can make them laugh, make them cry, make them angry. But that's only possible when you are emotional about the topic. I repeat again, you cannot give a great talk about the topic which you don't like, which you are not passionate about. Now look at my passion. How am I speaking? You can see my face animated. Why? This is my passion, guys. I have given up my cryogenic engineering. I'm like my engineering field. And I'm doing this since last 19 years. This is my 20th year. When you are passionate, when you are emotional, you, you give an emotional talk, a heart-touching talk. But you can't do drama there. Emotions should come from inside. They are real emotions. And they captivate the audience. Audience get riveted. And you also have to understand the emotions of the audience. Here one point is there. Know your audience. Second point is you should understand the audience in front of you is which audience, what they need, which stuff. You can't go in, for, in front of farmers and talk about something else which they are not concerned with. You can't go in front of a CEO and talk something about which they don't understand, which they don't like, which they don't want to hear. And politicians are very good in that. They are so, so much intelligent that they know that wherever, suppose in the evening, in, in, in the morning, they have meeting with IS officers. They will address them as they should. But when they go in the go and uh, address a rally where farmers are there, they will address accordingly. You should know the audience with, with whom you're talking to. Effective body language is the result of your emotions again. You cannot say that, oh, now I want to have a proper body language and I will stand like this, sit like this. It's not like that. When you're emotionally charged, as I said, do you remember the triangle? Feelings, behavior. When you are emotionally charged, your body language, your eye contact, all will be appropriate. It will follow. Body language will follow. When emotions follow, body will follow. Intonations and pitch of voice, very important it is. Intonations and pitch of voice. I hope all of you can hear me. Just nod your head. If you can hear me, nod your head. Yeah, that's all. My video is from hope all of you can hear me okay just a minute i will plug out my uh, camera and again plug in and again start my camera just a minute yeah okay uh, am i audible just nod your head am i audible nod your head okay no problems and next is get the audience involved so here how many of you have Teachers or any any teacher who only speaks one way and doesn't allow you to get involved. All of you have? I also had many teachers. This becomes monotonous and dull. You have to ask questions to the audience. They should get, you know, I am also doing that. Can you hear? Can you see that? I'm getting you involved. And if I don't get you involved, you will say that this is not for me. He's talking to himself. We don't want to hear him. Get the audience involved. Ask them some questions. And Narendra Modi ji is very good in that. You can, you can see the way he communicates. 
he gets the audience involved into his talk. Go and watch his public public talk. You will understand that. Sense of humor is also very important. If you are talking very serious things without adding some sense of humor, it becomes dull and monotonous. Of course, there is a limit, and we should know where to use it. If there is a serious issue going on, uh, no way of say, no no point of having this sense of humor. Again, CS is there. Common sense, common sense is very uncommon because it is not there. Mastery in language. This is the last point I'm telling you. Mastery in language. But this is the last point. These are important points. Language. Oh, English. Yeah, fine. It's good. But you don't need all the words in the world. Shashi Tharoor vocabulary not required. Normal English. Fine. The problem in India is we are focusing on the grammar and the perfection and the pronunciation instead of focusing on the message. and this is the reason why many of you many people tell me that sir i am good in public speaking but in hindi not in english why this is we want to speak perfect english because in school we have been told by our teachers that don't do silly grammar mistake if you do a mistake grammar mistake you are silly and who wants to be silly no one that's the problem now let us come to the next point and then i will take your questions action plan my talk will be useless if there is no action and guys understand one thing whatever i have told you is the result of my study and my research one more question many people ask me that you know why you have chosen this field friends there are two days which are important in our life first is when you are born second is when you come to know why you are born and later okay and that second day was important for me i came to know why i am born for and i will tell you why there are some points which i'll tell at the end observe great speakers but don't copy them observe them be a good observer how they speak go for rallies now it's not possible but observe how they speak don't copy them keep a public speaking journal now public speaking journal what it should have it should have all the information like good quotes idioms must be there properly better vocabulary must be there some stories must be there because in your public talk stories is a part of that you should be able to tell a story all the information you are going to forget if you think like oh i'm i'm having very good memory no keep a journal public speaking journal and all this information must be revised regularly i will i will tell the point what i want to say is it must be revised regularly actively participate in different groups and events what we do is i have seen students what they do is if they are offered what you want to do you want to anchor or you want to do the chair arrangement and sitting arrangement what do we accept ah i will do the chair arrangement and sitting arrangement that's of no use in fact you work for 3 hours doing all the stuff and the anchor speaks for 1 minute and he steals the show and you are there working 3 hours doing nothing i mean no appreciation nothing else why we choose that because it's easy because no one will criticize you again criticism is the biggest problem for public speaking human is afraid of not tigers more actually now human is afraid of another humans and the criticism and let me tell you three important things listen carefully in our in this world 80% are are criticizers they criticize 19% are talkers means what how huh, one day i want to go on the stage they only talk and only 1% actually go on the stage now you decide where you want to be in 1% or remaining 99% do not avoid but face the situation that is what i said next time when your hod or when your team leader says that would you like to anchor go there mm. but sir i am not prepared that's what i'm saying you cannot prepare by sitting in the classroom you prepare when you go on the stage fear you you said that no sir one day you know i will be perfect and then i will go on the stage. you will never be 
you get better when you go on the stage every day you get better now what is this before the d day one month and all see here what happens suppose someone tells you that after 10 days you have to give a public talk what happens oh my god see it's like butterflies in your stomach every day you are thinking about that talk how it will go how can i speak i will make a mistake and girls especially boys think girls will laugh at me and ah i'm finished now one week goes one day before you can't sleep also you have done lot of practice and practice and practice and now one hour before you are so nervous oh my god and one minute before the nervousness is highest you go on the stage highest nervousness you start speaking and you experience the highest nervousness of your life but only for 3 to 4 minutes and after that the amygdala calms down because the amygdala realizes that this is not a life and death situation calm down you calm down you end your talk and at the end when you come down you are very happy dear friends when you complete your public talk don't ask anyone how was your talk tell yourself i went on the stage that is my achievement don't need approval of anyone don't don't be a perpetual beggar for approval no need of anyone's approval first of all i went on the stage that's fine if they approve me it's a bonus i'm so happy thank you thank you all of you and when you go on the stage accept the nervousness and then follow the i told you about nervousness how to accept it accept okay i will be nervous don't say i don't want to be nervous i will be nervous okay i'm feeling nervous okay no problem still i will go on the stage yesterday uh, i was reading book of michael phelps all of you know this guy and he says that average people don't do when they don't feel like doing it average people don't do when they don't feel like doing it achievers do it when they don't feel like doing it they do it even when they don't feel like what i want to say is even you don't feel like going on the stage go on the stage because your emotions are telling you they are giving you a wrong message they are giving you a wrong message don't listen to those emotions your growth is on the stage your growth is on the stage no matter how much work you do but if you aren't able to present in front of public you will get only bread see i always say education will give you bread public speaking will give you butter what do you want both we want bread and butter we want education academics also and public speaking also two minute rule is there very interesting rule is there two minute rule when you go on the stage you will be nervous for two minutes and you 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 can't speak you forget what to do you don't speak make the audience speak how ask them questions ask them what do you think about this hello raise your hand and tell me audience will keep on thinking some will raise the hand and you will get that 2 minutes of space where you can calm down this works really works now at the end i'll tell you my story i never participated in any event in my entire academic life i passed out my be in 1998 i think most of you were not born also i never went on the stage in my school i never went on the stage no gds no public speaking nothing 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 i was a person who was low in confidence i was not good in communication i was shy i was introvert if you think that sir i am not a good communicator i never participated this is the lesson for you my final year presentation i remember in my engineering days my my guide was there project guide he said that sandeep you will get 15 minutes to give your presentation as you know like i i was frozen frozen due to fear i went on the stage and i finished my presentation in 2 minutes 
and my guide was looking at me. He said, "Huh? Still, thirteen minutes are there, and I had nothing to see." It was a horrible experience, and I got eleven marks out of twenty-five. But my highest crowd was two thousand, and on that day, on that day, I was actually depressed due to my family problems, and still I went on the stage. And on that day, I signed fifty-two autographs after my talk was over. One more special day was there. I told you that I bombed in my B. After twelve years. i trained the same teachers for communication skills i was invited as a guest speaker in my own college to train the teachers that was my special day and last point for example for this particular talk you invited me let me tell you one thing i was not preparing i just made these slides one hour before so all these slides only one hour before so what do you want to see i was not preparing no i prepare every day and i am preparing since last 20 years you cannot i think all of you have this experience in your school there is a elocution competition and your teacher gives you this topic and you write down all the sentences and the whole speech you cram it and you go on the stage and you do verbal vomiting nothing else is there you just go and vomit whatever you have crammed it that's of no use if you want to be a good public speaker you have to maintain a public speaking journal and you have to prepare every day you should read news current events you should read quotes you should read stories you should have some anecdotes you should have some metaphorical examples only then when you are called on the stage you can give a good talk one story i'll tell you one day i was invited as a guest speaker in one place in near sangli it is mahableshwar and i was the guest speaker so my family members said we also want to come because it's a hill station i said okay come and i was just uh, in my car listening to the podcast and audio books just 10 minutes before before the before reaching the place i took out my notepad and wrote down four five points what i have to speak and my wife asked me that you haven't prepared i said to my wife that i am prepared and i am preparing since last 16 years now i am deciding what i am going to speak that's all so that my talk must be to the point you have to always prepare guys if you want to have an impact on the world on the society on this great nation on your employees on your friends public speaking is the key for that this world is transformed by great public speakers any public speaker you can take right from mahatma gandhi ji jawaharlal nehru mother teresa nelson mandela to narendra modi ji any any person if you want to be great and impact the world public speaking is the key for that and when great news is there anyone can become a good public speaker you don't need any past experience you don't need to have the lucky genes in you so guys this is from my side i hope i have not bored you much let us come back here and uh, some questions now so harshit if you if they have some questions now they can ask um yeah i think you can just like raise your hands and then manoj has raised their hand they can unmute ask questions and then we can work through like that is that work yes yeah hi manoj. hi hello sir oh hey manoj are you in you know home i think okay go ahead yeah uh, yeah actually i am in hostel So, okay, no problem. Answer. Hostel H one, H two, which one? Ah, uh, it's hostel fourteen. Okay, good. I'm also yeah, a PhD good. student here. Oh, really? I'm also which a PhD man? student. I'm in energy science. Oh, great. Energy okay, science good. Energy science and engineering. 
that's yeah. i think related to mechanical so yeah. that, thanks it's a lovely talk and uh, really great things you have told and a lot of stories as well uh, so the my question is uh, whenever uh, we go to uh, any stage or whenever we we go to talk to any unknown person or public speaking so there is a moment like whenever you go to the stage before that like 2 minute before that our mind goes really fast and it it makes the scenarios like you become a doctor strange for just 2 minutes and you see all the possible outcomes like where you going to fail right and so i think uh, we can say that uh, to, we do too much analysis and then we get paralysis yes and when, then we and then we, we we don't do anything and then and we, then we decide like uh, I'm, i'm not going to do this so how can we uh, mean how can we break that loop like that analysis too much analysis is a paralysis how can we break that loop just before 2 minutes of the talk okay see here uh, as i said before 2 minutes you you can take an example hmm? if you see this uh, uh, kind of sport which is called as uh, paragliding they jump from a plane actually yes as you may you may have seen this guy uh, for example um, beer grills is there and many such people are there mm-hmm. what yes. happens is the stress level is checked when they board the plane board the plane stress starts building up why when the plane takes off the stress also takes off the plane reaches the altitude of 1000 more more stress 10000 feet now they have to jump before jumping highest stress is there because the, it is all checked its analysis is done before jumping highest stress is there the moment they jump stress also starts falling down it comes down and when they reach the ground stress is replaced by happiness ecstasy <laughs> and you have seen this these people jumping and shouting i done that now even when trainers go there the trainers who have done thousands of jumps there they also get nervous but the nervousness is controlled how it is controlled answer is very simple there is no medicine for this let me tell you one thing no medicine there is no mantra and there is no shortcut only one thing is there face it this is called as the exposure technique exposure means what simple it is start from small crowd small five people then 10 people then 50 people and once you start step by if you directly go in front of 500 people and if you aren't able to perform properly you may develop phobia it's called as public speaking phobia most of the people i know many people they have resigned from their post because they have to give a public talk i know one hod he told me that sir because of this i was a hod and i had to go there on the stage and speak every week i said i don't want this i will get diabetes and blood pressure so he stopped that was the mistake what is the solution first thing is i'll tell you mindfulness meditation is very helpful here mindfulness meditation what is mindfulness meditation closing your eyes and trying to focus on your breathing and when your mind gets diverted your mind will get diverted looking at the thoughts when you look at the thoughts just look at them okay the thought will be in the form of a picture video or words again bring your focus back again on breathing now what happens is due to this you become more mindful mindful means you know which are the emotions in you which emotions you are going through most of the people who go on the stage they don't know that that their nervousness is there and they are getting scared due to nervousness they don't understand this first understand your emotions second step is there second accept the emotions oh i am feeling nervous okay third deep breathing purpose be why because when you get nervous amygdala triggers all the organs breathing becomes shallow why blood flow is very high why fight flight or freeze response is there your amygdala tells your brain hey hurry up come on be ready for fight but when you do purposely deep breathing your amygdala calms down
and then second step i told you you don't start speaking you just say good evening friends and ask question to the audience ha huh? if you are giving a talk in front of your teachers you can't ask questions to your teachers i know that it's i know that but in the in this case once you slowly start speaking slowly start going in front of the crowd you will realize that this will come down but people they want another solution what they want is sir first of all i should be calm then i will go yeah. it is like they put cart before the horse and they are looking for sure that is not there believe me this is my 20th year i have given my first public talk in front of two people and my highest is 2000 now i train people from all over world they are ceos and cas and md and ms and all this confidence has developed after many years of hard work many years of exposure first stop expecting yourself to be a great public speaker in one month or two month or one year also stop that mm. please you will be disappointing yourself it takes many months and years to reach that level when you accept agree with this and the change is very slow you will get better by every talk every talk you will be better Manoj, got it? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you, sir. The mantra is action, Manoj. Action. Just keep on working. Don't keep a big gap between one talk and next talk. See, yes, I last last time I gave a talk, I think uh, with Toastmasters International Bangalore. I, I don't know yes. uh, where I gave the talk, but I want more talks. That's the reason why I come. I go everywhere, wherever they call me. <laughs> Guys, next one. Yes. I think Dikshika had raised her hand, so they can ask. unmute her. Ask, ask me, Dikshika. Good afternoon, sir. It was pleasure hearing you, sir. I had a doubt that at times we know that the thoughts we have in our mind are irrational; they are not the facts. But uh, then we may focus on uh, something else to, um, you know, um, so that we don't think about those thoughts. but again after some time like the clouds disappear they also disappear for uh, momentarily for some time as we focus on something but they again return and we know that uh, uh, they are uh, that we are again thinking about that but we shouldn't but it is at times very difficult to uh, 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 i mean to say to ourselves that we shouldn't do so so how should we control our mind in that case for that first thing is mindfulness meditation is the first step mindfulness meditation which i explained to you second thing you cannot control your thoughts every day we get thousands of thoughts it is said that we get around 80000 thoughts every day if i say to you that don't think about white elephant what will happen don't think of about white elephant you will think of white elephant purposely so thoughts will come the thoughts are like this water if you stir the water and if you keep on thinking about your thoughts that why 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 i should not like you are thinking about your thinking actually what you are thinking is you are thinking in this way that i sh- i i those thoughts come again and i should not think of those thoughts you getting my point yes so uh, i are, know you are, i but you are thinking about your thinking first of all we someone has told us i don't know who but we think that stop thinking negative stop overthinking okay stop ruminating we have been told in this way and that impacts us and we think that we are the only one in the world we overthink and this creates the problem the fact is everyone thinks because our mind is designed for thinking without thinking our mind cannot solve the problems see understand one thing when thinking happens in the mind and we are constantly thinking because our mind wants to solve the problems which we are facing every day for example yes today you had trouble with your hod that thought will keep on lingering in your mind why because your mind wants to solve that problem your mind does not want you to be in trouble therefore this thought will keep on lingering in your mind and second day the moment you get out of the bed 
when you open your eyes first thought will be about your hod that first thought will come in that case you have to understand that these thoughts are there they are giving you a message the message is solve the problem what is the problem my hod is having some problem i had a issue with my hod i will go and meet him only then that lingering thought will calm down you are getting my point yes sir thank you sir you are welcome so harshit um anything so else no question please oh good like there are, i think there are three more questions so would okay. you would like to take them okay. okay yeah i'll take so, them yeah uh lokesh had a question they can unmute and ask yeah sir so, uh, it was a nice talk sir thank you for giving this wonderful talk um my question is about right like i feel that from my experience personal experience the, the why i feel nervous while present or while i make a public speech is that i don't know how to handle failure or criticism hmm. so like i think the main root cause is that what if i fail or what if i get criticized for my point of view so i want to like to know like how do you handle failures or criticism so i feel it is quite natural that in some of your talk you will end up failing it's inevitable and also some people can find your point of view something wrong so how do you handle when someone is pointing something wrong in you or sometimes when you fail because if you can address that if i can handle that i think my nervousness will reduce to a drastic level so that is the my biggest fear while presenting and i would like to know how you Okay, like from your experience, how you handle these things, sir? Okay. First thing is, uh, you, your question has two points here: how to handle failure and how to handle criticism. Am I right? Yes, okay. sir. How to handle failure? See here. Uh, first thing is this: uh, we have to understand, failure is not a person. Failure is an event. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. Suppose I fail in any public talk. this does not mean that i am a failure what it means is my talk was a failure mm -hmm. we label that to our whole personality see here what happens my today's my talk sucked okay it means today my talk was not good but we over generalize this and we say that i am completely failure mm -hmm. in psychological terms it's called as over generalization or labeling let's give you another example in a mango box if one mango is spoiled mm -hmm. do we call the whole mango spoiled no no one mango is spoiled similarly when your one talk is not good this does not make you complete failure this is the way i handle my failure okay because failure if you want to be a good public speaker you have to handle failures mm -hmm. you cannot avoid this when you fail criticism will come and criticism one great uh, line i remember this is by aristotle i think he says that the best way to avoid criticism is sit in home is it a good way no sir see here in this way it is understand criticism ha huh. if you really think like in this way criticism also helps you to be better let me mm. tell you one thing but we don't look at criticism in that way we look criticism as attack on our ego we take it very personally i i am criticized on my youtube channel there are many comments but i find if there is any truth in that if it is there i learn from that and if it is not there it is just a a person who criticizes destructive criticism he himself is having some problems emotional troubles he needs help sympathy so as i said here in this way it is you want more income income tax will come okay if you want more income income tax will come you want to be a public speaker criticism will come you want to marry responsibilities will come you want good grades study will come you want fitness diet will come this is the reality of life this you have to understand 
sir but i want to be a good public speaker but people should not criticize me this is perfectionist attitude you cannot be perfect and one thing i'll tell you if you try to make everyone happy you will be miserable and go to mental hospital that will happen and you if there are 100 people in front of you all will not be happy with your talk the reason is everyone has different belief system mm-hmm. you have to accept even you don't like some some speakers so everyone has the choice to dislike you got it this is this is the healthy thinking which we need you have to be shameless as i said <laughs> positively mm-hmm. shameless okay. otherwise no no way yeah a second question Thank is there harshit welcome uh yeah so man we had a question come on we yes go ahead so thank you for the excellent session my question was like it's easier thought than done to actually implement to not think about the nervousness and like most importantly what others will say but how to actually have your psychology wrapped up around your mind that it's okay and then frame your sentences and posture while you are speaking like in general So, yeah that's that's what i said it's it's very easy to give a public talk on public speaking but even while giving a public talk you are giving a public talk on public speaking so if i say that today i am not nervous i'm lying i'm lying this you have to go through see it's in the as i said before you have to go through all these things and my session will not be of any use to you and listen until you go and actually act and i'm not saying that only these tips will help you 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 have to develop your own techniques to handle yourself not only my you also have to develop your own techniques you have to handle how it works you yourself my techniques are overall if they are good but if your way of handling nervousness on the stage is different go ahead with that some will say that sir i will count 1 to 10 go ahead some say that first of all i will greet and i will do deep breathing go ahead some say that i will go step by step i will go in front of 5 then 10 then 100 go ahead there is no one size fits all rule here this is a public speaking and everyone is different got my point yeah yeah and the last question for the day of tanava you can go ahead i guess Hello, sir. I really enjoy listening to you. I I, so, I realized that I was watching you. <laughs> so, sir, my uh, question is uh, like uh, compared to public speaking about a particular topic or uh, something academic, uh, I I don't find that that difficult. What I find more challenging is when I have to make informal conversation with people, breaking the ice, and especially with people I don't know too well. So, uh, do you have any suggestions on how I can work on that? uh see this this happens due to uh there are many reasons uh maybe you think like uh, am i making sense what i speak um will people take me seriously or it may be like um, i i i don't know what to say this is the main problem people have i don't know what to say yeah so in these situations again the method is same don't avoid such people next time when you find someone like you don't know go and start the conversation now this this is again a very interesting as i said this is called as in vivo or it's also called as shame attacking exercise shame attacking means what see here there was one uh, I'll, i'll tell you one story about this there was one psychologist albert ellis and he had this fear what was the fear the fear of getting rejected by ladies especially he did one experiment he decided to go in botanical garden which is there in new york and he decided that every day for the next 7 to 8 days i will go there in the garden and try to break the conversation try to uh, break up and start breaking the ice and speak up he went first day second day third day and after 8 days he got the data he met 120 ladies out of that 118 rejected him and 
and only two ladies spoke to him and then he decided, he told those ladies that second day again we will meet here and he went there no one came but can we say this is a failure now you said that yeah this is a failure sir it was not a failure he realized that it is not as difficult as i think though some of them rejected me but it is not as difficult as i think this is called as shame attacking exercise these things what whatever problems you are having these things do not have any theoretical answer i can't say that go and refer khurmi gupta and find out the answer here you have to get out of your shell go and speak to people when they will reject you how you handle the rejection that's the question here what my point and yes, most of us have this problem most of us boys and girls both of you have problem talking to opposite gender we have this problem everyone has this i have gone through this but now i realized how to handle this so next time pranav right pranav your name is yeah now next time go and start a conversation i start with hi my name is pranav and then some will reject you but actually i'll tell you one thing we think that i am more nervous even the person in front of you is also nervous in fact he is more nervous and we think that what he is thinking and he is also thinking what you are thinking okay so it's not like that see you are far better than what you think let me tell you one thing you are far better than what you think 15 years before if someone had told me that i will be a public speaking trainer i would have laughed first amazing life is amazing it is lot of possibilities are there anyone can achieve anything only the problem is we screw up here we screw up here just fix this and unlimited possibilities are there great guys i hope uh, you all had a good time with me i try to give my best and hope uh, one day i will see you as a public speaker and in that public talk refer me also <laughs> okay so look guys take care and harshit uh, should i leave now uh, thank you very much for the session sir just a concluding note i think the most interesting part of this session for me at least was the fact that a lot of the lessons that you shared with us were things that you learned from your personal experience and and you know the struggles that you faced and it's very comforting for people to know that those are really well i mean really doing good in public speaking right now had to go through the same you know hurdles that they are facing right now so i think that that was like fantastic and this is advice that i think will really work because i've also seen it work for me in such cases so it was really interesting thank you very much for your time and for everyone next time uh, not only harshit you people have to do anchoring of such sessions oh yes okay? next time you have to do and organize all these sessions that will boost your confidence if possible give my regards to dr atre sir whether he is there or not i don't know please give him my regards thank you friends bye bye all of you